should be mm -hmm. carried out as an expression of caring. Any of these technologies, whether they're interpersonal or technological, if they're used for nursing purposes, they have to be used as an expression of caring. And if anybody who's watching this tape has ever participated in or, or been present at a show of force in a psych mm -hmm. unit, you know that those can be carried out in very angry ways mm -hmm. on, beha on the part of the staff, or they can be carried out in very loving ways. And if you're practicing nursing, they have to be carried out as an expression of your love, and I'll say the L word, your love for that person as person, as fellow and sister human being. I don't know if I gave enough of an answer. Maybe I went too long on one yeah. example, but um, I think the key point is, regardless of the technology that you're employing to assist you, the reason you're employing it is because you have decided that it's an effective way in this situation for communicating caring with the person. Mm -hmm. No, I can understand that because I have worked in a uh, psychiatric um, facility before. So, another well, that brings me brings to mind another point that people ask about a lot, and that is, um, how do we grow in caring? How do we honor ourselves as caring person? Do we have to be perfect? Did I, was that me, Savina Shonifer, ever failed to express caring effectively in situation? About 15 or 20 times a day. But that doesn't mean that I don't keep trying. Mm -hmm. And that trying involves uh, being open to reflecting on one's own actions and being open to getting input from others and from the situation. Um, sometimes when people get serious about studying caring or practicing nursing as caring, they want to start beating out of themselves and everyone around them every, <laughs> every uh, expression that might not be the most effective caring expression. Mm -hmm. And some people like to use the term non-caring. I don't, because if we say to be human is to be caring, then any time we're being human, we're being caring. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's very hard to understand how that action in that moment is that person's living of their own caring. But as a nurse, that's my job, to figure that out. So we don't have to be, you know, oh, well, I'm more caring than you are. Or, oh, look at her. That was very uncaring. Well, that in itself <laughs> is mm -hmm. not an effective. Mm -hmm. Because I think when we work with each other as colleagues, we can go at it two, two ways. One is, oh, well, you know, you're not up to par. And the other way is, I notice that you're doing these things and I'm seeing some of the results. And I know you well enough to know that, that underneath there's an element of trying to express your caring there. Uh, my perspective is it's not being as effective as you would like. And go at it that way rather than, uh oh, mm -hmm. you know, a demerit against you. Oh, look at her. She's not near as caring as I am. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I use the phrase using caring as a club. We have to avoid that. Mm -hmm. Anytime we use caring as a club, we're failing to use caring effectively. Good point. Yeah. Tell, tell us a little bit about how nursing and caring can be used to guide education, research, practice, administration. Good. I think I've talked quite a bit about edu uh, practice. Mm -hmm. So I'll try, I'll go, um, well, I've talked some about education. I won't stop too long there. Uh, I would just say that if uh, faculties of nursing really think that caring is one of the key concepts in the discipline of nursing, then they ought to examine their curricula to see that it's there in the uh, 
strength that it needs to be there. Mm -hmm. There's no excuse today for uh, back in the mid to early 70s, we could say, well, there's no literature on caring. Well, we can't say that today. You just check uh, Ovid or Sinal or any of those and you'll find mm -hmm. the last time I checked, there was well over 3,000 uh, hits. Sure. Okay. Administration. Administration is very much like um, education in that people in the role of administrators are ministering to the service of nursing. Yes, they're employed by some healthcare institution, but if they call themselves nursing administrators and call themselves doing nursing administration, then what they're ministering to is the service of nursing in this institution. And that's done in several ways. One, by advocating in the hierarchy for the resources that are needed at the bedside level where the service is the direct delivery of service. And then the other sort of direction is uh, the nursing administrator needs to have as her prime, his or her, listen to the, her, his, as his or her primary uh, view of themselves, nurse. Not administrator. Yes, the nursing administrator draws on the science of nursing administration, supported by the science of healthcare administration, supported by the science of general administration, but it's all for the purpose to advance the service of nursing in this institution. So when nurse administrators disassociate themselves from the bedside nursing staff, they're no longer able to carry out their role. Mm -hmm. Anne and I have uh, written a couple of papers on this. They were published in the journal of no, Nursing Administration Quarterly. And there's also been some work by other people in this vein. So that's enough about administration. It still involves intentionality and knowledge of the literature and identification of self as nurse with the commitments that nurses have. Now, research. Oh, good. There's all the research in nursing on caring. It reflects the whole range of research methodologies, quantitative and qualitative. Um, the whole range is reflected. And there's even been some research done with nursing as caring using quantitative methods. However, my perspective of it is that the nature of the theory of nursing as caring requires primarily qualitative study. And um, a lot of the research I've done has been uh, using the phenomenological method. And for a, a number of years, I did a series of studies, not all of them were published, on everyday caring. And I did this in part because there's not a whole lot known in the literature about everyday caring. And while that's not nursing knowledge, it's knowledge that we need to bring into nursing. And it wasn't there, so I worked on it. I um, have done some focus groups as well. And I noticed in the focus group that one of the values of the focus group was the dialogue between the members. Not just the data that I got as a researcher, but the dialogue. So I sort of invented uh, what I call group phenomenology. And I published several studies with colleagues using group phenomenology, but it's kind of an integration of a focus group method and a phenomenological method. And one of the cool things about it is the research participants themselves participate in synthesizing the data. All right, I think we're out of time. I want to thank you so much for um, spending this time with us, letting us um, understand um, nursing as caring theory a little bit better. And I'm sure if uh, students have questions, they will be contacting you.
Definitely. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jennifer. Your questions really prompted a lot of thought on my part, and um, I was able to bring out some points that I wanted to bring out. So thank you for your great participation. You're welcome.